Hi, this is Alfred Weaver, professor of computer science at the University of Virginia and a co-guest editor of this special issue with my longtime friend, Dr. Jane Prey. My guest today for our interview is Wendy Dubow. She is a research scientist and the director of evaluation at the National Center for Women and Information Technology. Wendy, thank you for taking the time for this interview. We appreciate that. Thanks for having me. So let me ask you the first and obvious question. Why do you think diversity in computing is important? So computing is a creative endeavor. And research has shown that diversity enhances creativity and innovation. And research has also shown that teams, diverse teams perform better, um, that women on, in a team increases the group's collective intelligence, and that participation of uh, technical women in tech companies actually correlates with a higher return on investment. Um, so there's a lot of research suggesting that diversity is good for um, for computing. And when people ask me what I do and, and then wonder why our um, organization focuses on computing, I always talk to them about the fact that computing undergirds all of our lives. It's, it's central to our society now. And so in, in that sense, it's really important to have a lot of different kinds of people creating the technology that a lot of different kinds of people use. And just the other day, in fact, I overheard some NCWIT staff wondering, you know, how would a woman redesign the iPhone to make it work better for her? Um, you know, what kinds of things could be happening within computing if an even wider variety of people were uh, creating the technologies that we all use? Our CEO at NCWIT used to work at Bell Labs, and she tells a story that I like to share with people, that um, the first voice recognition systems hung up on women because they hadn't been trained to recognize women's voice octave, and you know, there were no women on that development team. And that was something that only became apparent once there was you know, a woman tester way down the line in the product development. And you know, there are all sorts of designs and innovations that are created without women's input or the input of other underrepresented minorities. And we're suffering from a lack of diverse perspectives, and we might not even know when we're suffering from them. We also have a workforce shortage in computing. The Bureau of Labor Statistics estimates that there'll be 1.4 million computing-related job openings by 2020. And women comprise about 50% of the population, more than 50% more than of college degree recipients and more than 50% of the professional U.S. workforce, but only 26% of employed persons in the computing professions are female. And so we feel like society is missing out on women's contributions, and in turn, women are missing out on secure, high-paying, really creative jobs. Boy, what a great answer. That was, <laughs> that was fantastic. <laughs> and I'd never heard the Bell Lab story. Oh, you hadn't? Good. Or, I didn't know no. if that common knowledge or not. Like, I use it a lot, but I never know if people have heard it or not. Right. I have not. So, um, yeah, that's, you know, once you say it, it's obvious, but I hadn't had that thought. So, mm -hmm. cool. Okay, uh, second question for you. Um, so, what has the National Center for Women and in Information Technology done to help achieve those diversity goals that you just spoke about? Well, we do a number of things. One of the things we do is share published research um, about promising and best practices for increasing gender diversity. So we have a, um, a resident social science team, and I'm on that team. And we go into the existing published research and find out what techniques and what programs have some evidence behind them that they actually work to recruit, retain, and advance girls and women in computing. And, and we look at research from in the K-12 sphere, in post-secondary um, colleges and universities, and now even community colleges, and in the workforce and entrepreneurial spheres. And then we write up that research in what we hope are accessible ways <laughs> so that busy academics and, and non-academics can take these practices and the strategies and just go implement them in their schools and in their workplaces. We compile all these things into free downloadable professionally published materials. We put them on our website. We distribute them in hard copy. We do this for our member organizations, which I'll talk about in a second. But anybody can go to our website and, and download these materials and learn from them, raise their awareness, 
and hopefully learn some techniques that they can implement in their local environment. And can and you so, give us the URL for your website? Oh, sure. It's www.ncwit.org. .org. That's pretty easy. I think even it I is. can remember that. <laughs> <laughs> and so we create this wealth of or, or I guess we surface anyway this wealth of knowledge. And we do some primary research ourselves too. So we create more knowledge in the field. We're sort of an organization of organizations. We have over 300 members around the nation that include K-12 focused organizations like Girl Scouts and 4-H and also lots of different post-secondary institutions you know, that have computing or information sciences departments and then lots of corporations and startups. And we try to equip member representatives from all those organizations with the tools they need to make change in their own organizations or to do outreach in their local communities or whatever it is, you know, create policies in their organizations, whatever it is that they can manage within their particular sphere of work and in their, their sphere of influence. And, and that's how we kind of leverage all this knowledge and try to spread it beyond, you know, what we as a small staff can do. And we try to drive people to our website and, and really encourage them to share these resources with anyone they think would be um, open to it. Okay, that's 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 really good information. Uh, uh, sounds like uh, your website is going to be a treasure trove of ideas uh, that just ordinary faculty can read and understand and then implement. Yeah, we hope so. <laughs> okay, so let me ask you uh, one last question. And uh, you said uh, during this interview that women make up 26% 20 per of the computing workforce. Where do you think we'll be a decade from now? Well, I like to think that we will have a much more equitable workplace. And both in terms of you know, seeing those statistics even out a bit so that, if there, and there are, if there are 57% of undergraduate degrees awarded each year to women that we could have a higher percentage of computing degrees awarded to women. Right now it's only, at, uh, I think it was 19% in 2011. And you know, we have 57% of the professional workforce being women. And then it you know, would be nice if it were more than 26% of the professional computing workforce being female. And I can imagine that happening. But when I say a more equitable workplace, I also mean once people are in the workforce, you know, that the environment um, and the policies and the culture can shift to be more accommodating to a wider variety of people. And I think that can happen. I mean, I think there will still be issues of inequity because hierarchies and in-groups and out-groups -group are just intrinsic to human nature. But we've already seen an evolution. I think we'll see a continued evolution of more entry-level positions will be held by women and underrepresented minorities. And I think more leadership positions will be, too, within computing. And then with that increase in numbers, I believe we'll see an increase in the meaningful participation of new types of people in computing. And in 10 years, you know, technologies are going to change in ways we can't anticipate now anyway. And with an influx of new and really different perspectives, you know, who knows what we'll see. I, I actually can't wait. I, I look forward to it. <laughs> Sounds great. Well, Wendy, thank you so much for your time. I appreciate your your donation of time and effort to make this interview possible. Thank you. Fun.